What is up, guys? It is the Sportster Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Sunshine State Sports Jabber, part of NGSC Sports, guys. Please remember to website at ngscsports.com for all your current sports content. Uh, guys, I am currently watching the second round of the NFL draft, and if you guys missed the show, the Walker Report uh, covered the all of the first round of the um, NFL draft last night. Uh, even had my co-host fall asleep midway through the show. Uh, we were all pretty tired by the time that the Bucks took at pick 32, which I will be talking about the picks uh, that were made by the Jaguars, Dolphins, and Buccaneers. Um, the Dolphins and the Jaguars have already picked in round two. The Bucks uh, are coming up. They're pick 64. Uh, the Rams just made their pick. They're about six or seven picks away before the Buccaneers will choose. Um, I've seen a lot of mock drafts uh, predicting they're going to take Kyle Trask, so we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, the Sunshine State Sports Jabber is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to our website, arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience at your local sports, at your ultimate, uh, your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? All right, guys, so let's dive into the show here. I am going to start with a uh, pay-per-view that happened just this past Saturday, and that would be the UFC. Now, again, like I said, guys, this is the first time that you uh, come on here. Um, I cover all Florida sports, anything that happens in the state of Florida. Uh, I was uh, unaware that the UFC was having a pay-per-view in Jacksonville because – I would have previewed that pay-per-view um, last week on this very, very show. So I um, do apologize for that. Um, but there were some uh, very um, interesting uh, things that occurred at UFC 251 in Jacksonville. Um, the first one, guys, if, uh, I was at Dave and & Buster's in Brandon watching the fight um, on T on the, in the bar on TV. Uh, the first thing that jumps out to me, obviously is Chris Weidman, not just breaking his leg, ladies and gentlemen, but shattering it. Uh, very nasty. If you want to watch a nasty replay, head over to YouTube and watch that. Um, watch the replay because it is nastiness of what happened to Chris Weidman uh, when he um, went to make a kick and yeah, he shattered his leg. So that was not a pretty, pretty sight. But guys, he said he will be back uh, in six months to fight. Um, Shasenko uh, beat Jessica Andre. That was a uh, total knockout. In fact, in that match, Shasenko uh, had Andre's uh, arms pinned. She was willing away at her, and then the referee, of course, then would stop the fight. Uh, and uh, she would retain her title. Uh, in the strawweight championship, uh, Rose, uh, uh Najamas, she beat Zhang on a, on a head kick. Uh, that was something to watch. That was the, that was the fight before the main event, but that was a hell of a match for Rose. Uh, very emotional guys after the match, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, um, uh, you know, in the ring when they're putting the belt around your waist and it's always cool, you know, to hear, uh, Dave and Michael Buffer, uh, sorry, if that's the right one. Uh, the buff, the, you know, the guy that does the ring announcement, uh, say new champion. She was in tears, bursting into tears. So congratulations to, uh, Rose on winning the USC strawweight championship, um, there the other night. Um, but, um, the main event guys would be Kamare Usman, the Nigerian Nightmare, versus Jorge Masvidal. Uh, this this match, guys, did get into round two. Uh, it was back and forth in round one, but in round two, uh, Usman hit Masvidal with a straight right hand. Again, if you want to see something really kind of cool and you want to watch a guy get knocked out, that would be one that I would recommend that you go see. Uh, Usman hit him square with a right hand. Uh, the sweat flew off of his face. He hit the ground. Um, the referee, you know, then Uzon would pound on him a couple of times. The referee stopped the fight. And he asked his corner where he was at. He was unaware 
of where he was located after he was knocked out. And again, um, during the post-fight conference, Usman uh, put the belt around his father's waist. His father had, must have been um, ill because he was back. And Usman said, my dad is back. Finally put the belt around his father's waist. Uh, Mazaval um, said that, you know what? He said he didn't show that power in our first fight. And he uh, obviously, you know, knocked me out and, and, and the rest is history. Um, so, like I said, you know, you look at um, you look at that, guys, and that was basically UFC 251. Of course, there were other matches in there. Those were just some of the matches that were the main on the main card. Um, but, I mean, for uh, the, the matches that I remember seeing when it started with Crute versus Smith, that was when I started watching it um, all the way through to the end. Um, so I didn't watch any of the preliminary stuff before. But again, like I said, uh, that was a, a, a great UFC pay-per-view, a great uh, – the last, you know, four or five matches other than watching uh, Chris Weidman shatter his leg was, was absolutely disgusting. But it was great to see uh, a great pay-per-view uh, right here in Jacksonville, Florida. So, again, I'll have to keep looking to make sure that UFC is not here in Jacksonville because – or in Florida in general – or I'll cover preview the UFC because, again, that's an event happening in the state of Florida. And, again, guys, if this is your first time coming in here, I do cover all Florida sports and Florida sporting events. So those are the things I try to cover on here uh, that I try to. I missed the UFC, so I apologize on that front. I do apologize uh, for that. Let me go ahead, guys, and jump to another thing that I know I did cover last week on here. And that would be the um, Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Uh, that happened last weekend as well, last Saturday through Sunday. Um, I'm sorry, it was uh, Friday through Sunday, excuse me, uh, last week. Uh, but the Grand Prix did, uh, did occur in the streets of downtown St. Pete. I... Uh, literally work no more than maybe three or four blocks away from where the track was located. Um, the race was won by Colton Herta. Um, he lasted out beating Joseph Newgarden, uh, was the guy that he beat, uh, in the end. Um, it is outstanding that, that this happened again. This was in the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida. This uh, normally, guys, kind of opens up the IndyCar season, but again, due to COVID, they pushed it back to last weekend to have more people in attendance. So that is uh, that. Is that. Uh, it was a very good race, a very good turnout. And of course, we're all hoping next year, you know, at this event that they can have more people, maybe have a full crowd again uh, next year, because it sure would be cool to have uh, full crowds again at sporting events. And I think surely, but surely we're getting to that point where it's going to happen uh, sooner rather than later. So that's a, that's a good thing uh, along with those fronts and stuff like that. So to me, uh, congratulations uh, to all the people who attended and congratulations to the winner of the St. Pete Grand Prix. Um, I will have to try to attend that. I still have not attended a race that race yet. So I will have to uh, try to attend it next year. Uh, at least one day to kind of see them. I know a couple years ago uh, when I was running 5Ks, I ran a 5K down there. That was kind of fun to run into the pits for a little bit and then run back out. But that was kind of cool uh, with the with the Grand Prix and everything like that. So that was a great event for this, the city of St. Pete and, and that kind of stuff. So that, you know, to me, that's pretty awesome um, that that happened. Um, so, you know, to me, to me, that, uh, that was pretty cool. Congratulations again uh, to the winner of, the, uh, of that event, um, of the event there. Um, so, you know, we, you know, that was an event that, you know, happens once a year here. Um, that happens once, you know, once, once, once a year here in the, in the St. Pete area. A golf tournament, guys, that's going on in Palm Harbor, Florida. It's a PGA Tour event called the Valspar Championship. 
Yours truly was at the tournament yesterday for the first round and got to see one uh, Brant Seneker hole out from about 150 yards away, maybe 120 yards away on number five. Got to see Phil Mickelson, who reluctantly missed the cut, guys. He bogeyed 18 today. I was watching the golf tournament on TV today, and he bogeyed the final hole to miss the cut at even par. Uh, but right as of right now, guys, here is the leaderboard um, as we speak. Let me head over to PGATour.com real quick, guys. I'm going to use my, my phone here to kind of give you guys an update on the – leaderboard uh, at the Valspar Championship in Palm Harbor. Guys, it is taking place at the Copperhead course. I, fortunately enough, have got to play that golf course twice. Right now, Keegan Bradley and S. Burns are tied at minus 12. Then you have Lucas Glover, Homa Hoffman at minus 8. Schwartzel, um, Zach Johnson, uh, Lewis Lobito at minus 7. Trangle, Stallings, Newman, Pro Crick at six under. So is Pat Perez. I got to see him yesterday. Taylor Merritt Grace at five under. I got to see Mr. Grace yesterday. Oval Watson is also five under par. Saw Charles Howe the third yesterday. He's four under par. I saw Victor Hoagland yesterday. There's Steneker at minus four as well. Um, there were a couple guys. Dustin Johnson's minus three. He's the number one point world. Uh, Two-time winner Paul Casey's minus three. He's nine shots back at the medium moment. Justin Thomas is two under par. And here's a bunch of the guys that are at minus one. And, of course, the ones who missed the cut, as I remember, Hogar, Love, Mark, Rogers, Mickelson, Reed. That's Patrick Reed. Uh, a lot of good players are not going to make the cut um, at the Valspar. But, again, that golf tournament is going on as we speak. Uh, the second round has concluded. I will go ahead, guys. Um, just let you guys know, <clears throat> excuse me, there will be no uh, Walker Report or Sunshine State Sports Jabber next week. Um, guys, I'm going to be out of town uh, for the weekend. Um, if you guys do not know, um, if you guys are new to my show, uh, my mom passed away on January 30th of this year. And Mother's Day happens to be this upcoming Sunday, um, the week uh, after. So um, we're going out of town. I'll be coming home on Mother's Day, but I'm not going to be podcasting except for Bullseye on Tuesday night. Other than that, I will be, um, there will be no Walker Report or no Sunshine State Sports Jabber um, next week. But coming back after that, uh, this show, guys, will be on a new network starting that Friday. Um, I have been signed to a new network that will, I will be airing my podcast on that network as well to kind of open up some more eyes to the Sunshine State Sports Jabber. So I'm happy with the opportunity that I have been given. Um, I will go into more detail about that on Facebook, and I also will go into more detail. Um, let me go ahead, guys, real quick. Let me see if I can... Um, Pull that up here real quick uh, to see where exactly I – hang on just a second, guys, because I was just uh, – my um, network will be on Coast to Coast Entertainment Network starting next uh, – the following Friday. This uh, broadcast will be part of their network as well as well as NGSC. So it's going to be on both networks, plus being on Facebook. Guys, I'm still working on trying to expand my StreamYard account to be able to go live on Facebook, YouTube, and that's right, the famous TikTok. I'm going to go and go there as well and get more eyes on both my shows as both shows will be on here. So I'm trying to get that to happen um, as we speak. So there will be more eyes uh, a couple Fridays from now, again, there will not be a Sunshine State Sports Jabber next week because I'll be out of town. I'll be out of town uh, next week for Mother's Day, um, which, guys, I'm going to be dead honest with you is going to be really, really tough on me. Um, this is the first year uh, that I will not have my mom on Mother's Day. Uh, she passed away. Uh, from a heart attack on January 30th of this year. Um, 
and guys that you know i'm gonna admit it, it it's tough every day um she loved this show she loved when i what i did she loved my thursday show so i'm still doing this for her and for me so i thank you for you know tuning in and bearing with me on this but i just wanted to kind of give you anyone that's in, that's new to the show that doesn't know why there won't be a show next week that would be um the reason why so guys let's jump in now to the national football league since the draft is on as we speak jacksonville jaguars are off to a great start under head Kirk, uh, excuse me under head coach urban meyer uh he has absolute knockouts they picked trevor lawrence i think we were not surprised that they were not going to take trevor lawrence but they get travis ATN, the running back from Clemson, late in the draft. You know, that's Trevor's teammate. Now, today, guys, the Jaguars, hang on just a second. I want to see something here. Let's see uh, who the Jaguars picked um, just this evening. Because, like I said, the Jags and the Dolphins have both made picks here in the second round. So let's, uh, let's see something here. Let's see what's going on. In round number two, for uh, let's scan here and see 40. Let's see, 39. So the Jets, okay, the Jaguars got cornerback Tyson Campbell out of the University of Georgia, so now they've got. They went and got some defense, too, as long to go along with their offensive selection. Um, but that is a good pick. Um, and so far, like I said, the Jaguars have really knocked it out of the park with getting the needs that they need. They also got an offensive lineman as well um, in the draft as well. I think they picked an offensive lineman, too. I think they had three picks in round one last night. So they ended up getting a, an offensive lineman as well. You, you you have to you know have to say to yourself holy crap they did such a great job um you know so far with their with their draft selections um you know could this be something that you know urban meyer can turn the team around he's doing a very good job with the draft now it's going to be up to him to of course um you know get everything right there you have of course like i said they got Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne as well. Um, so again, it, it 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 made a lot of sense. Um, you know, it made a lot of sense for them to do that. Um, for the, I'm sorry, they did not get an offensive lineman. It was just Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence in round one uh, for the Jaguars. So they picked up a cornerback here this evening. Um, so again. A great start to Urban Meyer. A lot of people, uh, all the draft grades I've seen has been A plus for the boys out of Duval County. Which is good, guys. This is a team that, again, went 1 in 15 a year ago. They went 1 in 15 a year ago, and now they, uh, you know, they this could be the turnaround that they need. Uh, you know, that that's a definite thing like that. Um, so we'll see how the Jaguars go into the, to the season. Now, again, the draft is not over guys. We'll, we'll have round three tonight. I'm sure they have more picks in round three, but they got their cornerback in round number two. They got a running back and a quarterback in round one. So the Jaguars are off to a fantastic start, um, in the draft and in the urban Meyer era, uh, has started very well the Jacksonville Jaguars as far as it comes to the uh, to the draft and the players that they picked up uh, so far uh, so far in the draft uh, this year. So congratulations, Urban Meyer, and them getting off to such a great start uh, to their draft as well. Uh, the next team, guys, is the boys that call Miami home, and that is the Miami Dolphins. Um, the Dolphins also did a very good job in the draft last night. Um, Getting uh, Waddle, the wide receiver, out of um, Alabama, which was pretty cool uh, for them to get that. That's obviously a weapon now that Tua is familiar with. Um, Tua, Tua is very familiar with him, obviously. Um, but, yes, I mean, so far, um, 
Miami did very, very well as well. But then, you know, you have some naysayers. Um, they said that Waddle is going to be a disaster at the sixth pick overall in the draft. Um, that's quite interesting that, that they would say that. Um, but, with, but without any doubt, I think that the Miami Dolphins have done pretty well for themselves so far uh, in the draft as well. Um they got uh, Liam Eckenberg, a uh, offensive lineman, an offensive lineman. Um, in so far, in so far in round two, so they made a you know they got some offensive help, obviously to help out uh, Tua. So again, guys, you know, off to a good start. I think the Dolphins, as long with the Jacksonville Jaguars, have had a good start to their draft so far. You bring my man Lewis in. Hey, Lewis, how are you? All right, so why is Wild considered being a disaster? Uh, let me read the article because this actually wow. is a – now, again, this is a Dolphins writer too, by the way. This is not oh. a nation writer. This is someone who writes for the Miami Dolphins. Let me bring up okay, the article. Okay. Okay. okay, it says, by any measure, Waddle at six is a disaster. That is the – it's written by – oh, they don't have the name of the author here. Hang on a second. There are so many different ways uh, did Miami Dolphins GM Chris Traeger manage to screw up the team's first pick in the 2021 draft, mm. which was sixth overall. Well, for starters, right out of the box, he broke one of the oldest, truest rules of drafting players in the first round by selecting a wide receiver. Mm. Uh, the unwritten but irrefutable axiom is both true and probable for two reasons. First, year yeah. and a year out. There are by far more players performing at a high level at that position than any other in football. To make matters worse, Waddle was almost certainly have been available at the 12th pick and certainly at 10. If Greer had to have Alabama's wide receiver so bad, why couldn't he have traded up from 18 rather than reaching for him at six? Mm -hmm. Then he could have had a player actually worth taking at six, which Waddle most certainly was not. So whoever wrote this article is not very happy with the pick. I, 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 do, I have to disagree with that. I, yeah, yeah. I can't see why that was a bad pick for Miami. Oh, yeah. um, I I don't know where that writer's coming from, you know, but, you know, they, they write, I, maybe it's for headline purposes, I don't know. Wacko. Wacko. Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe again, maybe it's for headline because they, they got a corner, or they got an offensive lineman tonight, so that's going to help you out a little bit uh, in round okay. number two. Um so that is the Dolphins have gotten – they're getting the guys that they need to strengthen that team because um, obviously Buffalo is still going to be pretty strong. The Patriots had a good draft, so that's going to be strong. I think the Jets have had a good draft so far too. So, I mean, the whole division itself, all four teams have, have improved very well within the division. So we'll have to wait and see again. I assume you our division, right? Yeah, the AFC East. Yeah, the AFC East. Yeah. So, I mean – um, you know, I, uh, I, I think every one of the teams in that, in the, in the, in the, uh, division have done very well as far as draft goes, both, sure. all, all four of them. So I don't know where that writer's coming from. That Waddle was a bust at six. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think the good teamwork wow. he has to do in Alabama, that's going to help. He's not going to go into a quarterback that he doesn't know what to do with. So to me, I don't, I don't. I can't fathom where it's that Alabama went. though got in the draft last night. Why well, a lot of people went from Bama yeah, last night. But yeah. six from Alabama alone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Guys, the next team is the is the is the champs. Uh me and Lewis and Adam stayed up so just after midnight the whole night. to make them watch them make their pick and Joe Tryon is the linebacker that they chose. Um I think it's a good pick. Uh, he can also play defensive end, which means you could spell, um, you know, Sue. You could spell JPP. I think that's definitely going to help yeah. uh, that defensive line, which is already pretty good. Um, I did not know this, that the Bucks were the first team since the free agent, since free agency began to bring back every free agent. It has not happened since before free agency actually started. The Buccaneers are the first team in NFL history to bring back every free agent that they had from the from during the free agent 
uh, era. So uh, that um, that's before the dinosaur era. And then, wow, pretty amazing that they were able to bring back every free agent uh, that they had. Um, wow. They're getting ready to pick. I think they're picking here. The Chiefs pick is in. The yeah. Bucks will be up next. So I'm going to hold up here and, and we'll, we'll chit chat until they make their pick. Um, there was a, a article I read today that uh, Tom Brady, Tom Brady's joking around about Chewing Edelman coming out of retirement. I'm thinking, oh, here we go, here we, here we go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, guys, I'm tell you this right now, that's not going to happen. A, the Bucks don't have the cap space to sign him, and no. B, you just brought back Antonio Brown. That's not going to happen, guys. Yes, that's a pipe dream. As Bucks fans, we would love to see him come back or come play with Tom, win another Super Bowl, correct? Yes. But I just don't see that happening. That's, that's, no. I, don't, I don't see that I don't <laughs> coming out of retirement. Um, let me see, guys, real quick before the – I know the – Why Bucks, Antonio Brown? Ugh. Yeah, well, I, that I don't know. That I – I mean – the only thing I could think of, Lewis, is he does very well with Tom Brady. I don't know. I guess that he's the only quarterback. Yeah, he's a problem. Well, he is. I agree with you. I agree with you at all. I agree with you on, on that one. All right. So let's see here. Yeah. Now, supposedly, the Buccaneers had some teams wanting to trade up to 32. Right. But right. they, of course, ultimately did not decide to do that. Um. They, they stayed pat and made their selection. So that was good that they didn't. Because there were rumors that I had seen that they were going to trade down. They were going to trade back and take more picks in this round today or round three. Um, but Jason Light, I, to, to me, the Bucks had a good problem this year, and that was they didn't need, any, they didn't need anything. There, there were no needs for this football team after their Super Bowl win. So... The Chiefs just made a selection. They picked the center. So that's that's back to back centers that have gone because the Packers picked the center too. So that's back to back offensive linemen that have gone. Uh, that's pretty cool that he. Uh, so let's see where the Bucks go, guys. I have seen mock drafts having them taking Kyle Trask, the quarterback out of Florida. So I don't know if that's true. Um, I mean. If anyone in the, and you know you can call me wrong if I'm here, uh, University of Florida quarterbacks have not had great careers in the National Football League. Going back to Spurrier, That's none true. of them, have, Jesse Palmer, none of them have had great careers in the NFL. I don't know what is going to make Kyle Trask any different than the fact he's going to be learning under Tom Brady. That's the only difference that I can see out of all the other ones is he's going to have Tom Brady as a mentor. That's the only way that I think he might be a little bit yeah. better than the previous uh, University of Florida uh, quarterbacks. But other than that, I don't see how in the world uh, it's going to – well, we'll see. I mean, I could be wrong. Oh, the Bucks have already made their pick, guys. So we'll hold here and see. That was uh, – just like last night, they 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 had their pick and quit. They don't – the Bucks didn't fool around last night either. So let's see who they get, guys, in round two. <clears throat> then the Jacksonville Jaguars will be back on the clock to start round three. Yeah, yeah. So wait, it's rounds two and three tonight, then four to seven, correct? Correct. Yep. Four okay. to seven tomorrow. Yep. Uh. Now, see, Mel Kuyper has the Bucks needing a running back and defensive end. Right. So let's see where they go with that. If they go against on that course, it's on a commercial. Um, but, guys, like I said, I, I, I'll i be – we'll have to see which way the Bucks go with their pick here. Obviously, they not traded it because they made a pick. So the pick is in. Um, but, yeah, it was a long night last night to see them take – Yeah. Um. To me, guys, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think if they had cut the commercials down and yes. all, the, all the you know elaborate backstories for all the picks. And the opening act. It could have been a two-and-a-half-hour draft. We could all have been in bed by 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock last night mm -hmm. all the day. Um, no offense to any of the stories out there that the NFL is trying to push, nothing against their sponsors either. 
it just makes for a long night for the people that are <laughs> covering the draft. You know, yeah. we were trying to, you know, especially the ones who, you know, um, trying to cover the whole draft in its entirety, obviously, you know, so, well, like I said, we'll wait now guys. Cause the, the draft is on a commercial at the medium moment, yeah. depending on what network you're watching. I'm watching ESPN. So they're talking, they're advertising the Microsoft surface. <laughs> I'm watching on ABC. ABC. Okay. Since they are related. Yes, if you guys do not know, ESPN and ABC are both owned by the lovely Walt Disney World Corporation. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I think now owns part of Fox Sports, too. They own some portion of Fox Sports. Um, so. Man, they merge, they merge everything now. Yeah, they're going to be monopolizing things here soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're going to be monopolizing things here soon. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. Because they own, they, you know, they own, um, they bought Marvel out. They own the Marvel Universe. They own, yeah. um, what's his name that wrote all the Star Wars, directed all the Star Wars film, George Lucas. They own George his Lucas. studio. They own his studio. Yep. So they have rights to both of those. Okay, here we go, I think. Yeah, if you get the pick before I do, because ESPN is still on a commercial, so if they uh, cut back from ABC. I before I do, because uh, ABC is on like a seven-second delay. Okay, got you. Yeah, see, I'm watching there. But if you get the curse words, and I don't. <laughs> do, 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 do. And they're advertising the Florida Lottery <laughs> commercial. Now I know you're watching local. Yeah. The Bucks have seven picks remaining. Seven? Seven picks remaining. And then, see, 2018, they drafted Vita Vey and Ronald Jones, which are both still on the team. Uh-huh. In 2019, they picked Devin White and Sean Murphy Bunting. Now, those are both still part of the franchise. I recall that, yes. You know. And in the 2020 draft, they took Tristan Wirfs and Antoine Winfield Jr., who have both helped them both win a championship, which went mm -hmm. on to uh, that. Right, right. They picked a linebacker, and there is the Bucks war room right there, or the draft room. They used to call them war rooms, but now they call them draft rooms. There's Bruce Arians. If, if you're watching ESPN, guys, he's the guy with the kind of grayish hat with the purple shirt. If I know Lewis is watching ABC, so I'm not sure if he's watching the same feed I am. So, okay. So the pick is in. Let's see if Roger Goodell walks to the uh, uh, here. You know, I, I will have to say this. Last night, it seemed like to me he didn't get booed as much as he did. Maybe he just relishes it now. Maybe he yeah. relishes it. Which did surprise me, but talking about Kyle Trask, yep. All right, bye. Man. It did surprise me that Gabu as he once did. I think he relishes it now, Lewis. To be honest with you, why you would know? you want to watch being booed? Well, I, I think he knows it's coming, so he's oh, like, you know what? I'll, I'll just relish it. Now I get it. Jimmy Giles, yeah. Famous uh, fucking here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce. Oh, wrong, Bruce. Yeah. 
It's a cow trask. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> it was on delay. Sorry about that. Guys, I they told you I had seven second delay. They did pick Kyle Trask, guys. So the quarterback from Florida is going to be the backup to Tom Brady. Are you surprised that's a little bit low? No. I, no? No, I, not really. I mean, I think – I, I think on all honest I mean all honesty, I think you know Tom's gonna got at least two more years left, I think. So this will right, be a right. chance for him to kind of mature under him. Um I you know, I, I wish him the best of luck. Like, like I said, guys. Well, I mean he was such a big draw, a big name in college, and he got drafted in the only of the second round at sixty four. I mean I think it's well, kind of low. Um I mean, do you, I mean, did you see him, Lewis, possibly going late last night to somebody? Did you yes. See him in the first round, okay. I well, thought maybe, I thought maybe at least the top fifteen. Well, I mean, now here's the question: now is yes. okay. So now you see the two quarterbacks that the that I heard the Bucks were going to look were looking at. We talked about that too on the, on our both shows. Was either Trask or Ian Book, mm -hmm. the kid at Notre Dame, which I haven't even heard Ian Book's name even brought up. At all, yeah. Around yet, so I don't know if if he's not on the radar of anybody quite yet. I don't know. You know that I don't know. Uh, I guess I got two words. I guess I got three words. CFL. CFL could be. Yeah. Now there's Bruce Arians and Jason Light shaking hands. If you're watching the ESPN feed, he's they're shaking hands. So obviously they've drafted the next heir apparent, the next quarterback. Uh, in Tampa Bay, guys, is former Florida Gator quarterback Kyle Trash. So he is the future quarterback uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Congratulations to Kyle. He doesn't have to go very far. Get from Gainesville to Tampa. Not a very far one, about maybe a three, four hour drive. So that's not bad at all. So. Well, that's kind of far from me. <laughs> uh, us Florida we, do, we, think, we do think three to four hours is a long commute around here. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but that's what I think. Right. <laughs> yeah, don't rub it in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, guys, if you're watching, the Jaguars took uh, Andre Cisco, the safety out of Syracuse. So they've mm -hmm. drafted two defensive players um, to start. They had two offensive guys last night. Now they had two defensive guys. So the Jaguars took the safety out of Syracuse. Uh, Urban Meyer's done a pretty good job so far. My opinion yes. on his draft so far. Um, so let me guys jump into the Major League Baseball. The draft is continuing on, and we'll go back to when the Dolphins make their next pick. Um, guys, uh, George Springer, I think, will be making his debut um, here soon against the Braves. Last night. Last night. Yeah, his debut. Okay, thank you, Lewis. So he made his uh, debut. Not very good. What would, what did uh, what did how did he go? How did he feel? Over oh, four. four. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, George Springer. That hey, that's also uh, Jerry Springer's third cousin. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I kill uh, people and see I coming. Come on. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm looking. I'm looking real quick. I wanted to see what the scoreboard was uh, so far tonight. So. Yeah, but over four. So let's just say that his debut was one he would rather forget. Well, right now, guys, the Blue Jays are up ten to nothing over the Braves in the top of the seventh inning. Um, ah. but it looks like George Springer is not in the lineup tonight. Uh, he is. Not oh, I'm sorry. Hang on, man. I got. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. He is. He is one for oh. two. One for two. One. Right, that's better. That's better. Yeah. Um, the guys that have hits tonight, guys, uh, Bo Bichette has two, uh, T Hernandez has two, uh, Guerrero Jr. Guerrero Jr. has two hits and their oh, has two hits. They have 10 total hits. They have 10 runs on 10 hits. Wow. The Braves have no runs on two hits and two errors. So, so is that Vlad, is that Vlad's boy? Uh, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. He right now, Lewis is 0 for 1. Oh, for one, but he's you're got, not like, you're walks. not your father. That's for sure. You're not your father. He's got, he's got three walks, one strikeout. So he's, uh, 
he's got he just doesn't have any hits, but he's been walked three times. So I'm wondering if the pitchers are trying to stay away from letting him hit. Very similar to his dad. Very similar to his dad. His dad was a he good needs help from, He needs help from dad. Yep, that is true. Yeah, because I remember when he played. I remember when, I remember when his, his dad played. Yeah. Was I oh. a fan of him? No, but I remember when he played. Yeah, his his dad was a, a great baseball player. <laughs> yeah. Jack's coming in. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead, guys. That is the Jays. I'll be covering the Jays, guys, until they move to Buffalo, which I think is coming in the next week or two. And then after that, we will we won't see the Blue Jays. So we got ship off the Buffalo, huh? Yeah, ship off the Buffalo. Um, now here's a team that has had to call some players up, and that's the Miami Marlins. They've had some issues with injuries. Um, yeah. There was also, guys, I guess there was a terrible call uh, when they were playing the Brewers. Let me go in and look at this. I haven't got a chance. What do you mean by, uh, what, by, made by, the, uh, by the officials? Or by, by, by the, yeah, by the umpire. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, supposedly, from what I read, it was a – Obstruction call. Let me see. Oh, what that I've heard that before. Uh, Milwaukee manager Craig Council was not pleased with a second inning obstruction call on his pitcher during the Brewers six two home loss to the Marlins on Wednesday. Mm. One out and runners on third, first and third. Marlins second baseman Ian Diaz had a soft ground ball between the pitcher's mound and first base. Brewers starter Zach Godley easily fielded the ball as he moved toward the baseline and underhanded it to the first baseman Daniel Bogobach who was standing at the bag. Diaz was out by a large margin, but first baseman umpire Marty Foster called obstruction on Godwin. It was a terrible call. Council said after the game, I have no idea what Marty was trying to do to make up or for what he saw. It's even worse looking at the replay, and I thought it might have been a bad call. So, again, guys, that that happened. Um, you know, sometimes the calls go your way, and sometimes the calls don't go your way. No. Um, in this in this case, the Marlins got a call that went their way. Um, again, they do have some injuries that they're going to have to deal with, yes. but yes. going to call some guys up as every team does. You have you have the ability. And I believe uh, minor league baseball starts next week or the week after, depending on depending on what league you know. I think Double A and Triple A both start here in the next couple. Right? Weeks. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So those start up. So you're going to start seeing some of these young guys that are kind of chilling out in spring training facilities. You guys are the, you guys are the Pioneer League in Florida, do you? I don't believe so. I don't okay, know. No, no, I won't mention. I won't mention what I, I won't mention the uh, bizarre thing they're doing. Oh no, no, I was. I, I, I have an article about that. I saw that. I saw you what do. you do. Uh -huh. Aha! The, the home run derby. I saw that. I was yes. going to talk about that in a couple of weeks on our. Our Thursday show, Lewis, I'll bring that up. We'll, we'll, we can talk about it here, but we'll we'll talk about it more. Yeah. There won't be a show this week coming up, but the following right. week, we'll talk, I'll have that I'll have that topic up because that was one of the things I had seen. Yeah, guys, yeah. If, if you don't know what we're referring to, they want to have – if you goes to extra innings, they want to have a home run derby to decide who wins. Yes. Not gonna, they're not playing baseball, guys. They're going to go to a home run derby <laughs> to decide who wins the game. So how crazy is that? How this might be my ridiculous article of the week. How crazy that is uh, coming up in the Pioneer League. But, yes, that is yeah. something that they want to um, – And, they want uh, to yeah, well, yeah. on the way, that's, that, uh, that's a different game. It's not a Florida team. But uh, something did happen um, with the, uh, with the Atlanta. And, um, well, you know how Madison – what is him? Uh, Bumgarner is, of course, right? Yes. Yeah. When is a no hitter, not a no hitter? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Give it to him. Come on. It's a complete yeah. game. Let's get him for seven. Give him the give him the, the no hitter. Yeah. What are you uh, stupid? Well, the funny thing is, you know, it, you know, we don't get to see many no hitters. You see very few perfect games. And yeah. if you remember, Lewis, who was the Detroit Tigers pitcher that got the perfect game taken away from him? Galarraga. Oh, One of them got a perfect game, guys, taken away from him by a absolute, just horrible call. The guy was out by oh, five feet. The guy called him safe, 
but he was out by five feet, and he should have had a perfect. He game. wasn't safe. No, 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 no. No, it wasn't even close to being safe. Bull. Well, so here we go, guys. Real quick, jumping back to the draft. Here's the Houston right. Texans finally making their first pick. They didn't get a pick last wow. night. So, and there's a guy on the stage dancing in Houston Texans gear. Anyway, um, the Houston <laughs> Astros are back playing the Rays. And that the last time that these two teams played against each other was in the American League Championship Series last year. Um, so, again, they're back playing tonight. I believe at the time the Astros are – were winning the last time I checked. Let me see the – Scoreboard here. Go back up here. Uh, yes, the Astros are up six nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh. So they're they're struggling. The Rays are struggling this evening a little bit. Um, let me go, guys, real quick. I'm going to jump to the standings for both the Marlins. Well, the Blue Jays guys are in the AL uh, AL East with the Rays. They're in third place at 11 and 12. They'll be they'll be 12 and 12 because they're hammering the Braves as we speak. The Rays will fall to 13 and 14 on the year. Of course, they're all chasing Boston. The uh, Orioles and the Yankees are both 11-14. Um, but, again, I don't expect New York to be down there forever. That's just no, my of course not. Um, I don't expect that to happen. And the Marlins guys are 11-13 in fourth place behind the Braves. Phillies, who are both 12-13. and 13. The Mets are 9-10. and 10, And the Nationals are 9-12. and 12. Um Tyler Glass now, I guess one of the that is the ace of the staff for the Rays. I guess went on a f bomb rant, and his mother, his mother texted him and said, "Tyler, you need to watch your language." Yeah, his mom got on him about the way he cursed on TV. So oh, no. there you go. Well, it was on national television. I mean, you know, can you make a complete fool of yourself in front of national audience and your own mother? Ugh. Yeah, mom's watching. <laughs> Mom is watching. <laughs> Um, also, guys, too, if you do not know, uh, Shane McClanahan made his regular season debut for the Rays. He pitched in the playoffs last year. Uh, he shined very well in their loss. They did lose and in his debut, uh, his regular season debut. But he did hit 100 miles an hour plus on the gun. Uh, this is a guy that everybody in this area, in my area in Tampa, wanted to see come be on this team to start the season. Fortunately, yeah. he was optioned down. And now with some of the injuries to the pitching staff, he is making his way back up oh, to, the, to start. So that, guys, will wrap up um, baseball. And let me go back real quick and let me drop my sponsor here. The Sunshine State Sports Shabber is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, guys, arenaeats.app for the ultimate fan experience at your favorite sports venues. Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in seat delivery. How do you place your order? And let me go ahead, guys. I usually have this team basically at the beginning of my show, but I thought, you know what? Why not put them in the middle? And that would be the Rowdies of Tampa Bay. They're on their oh, eager yeah. to defend their Eastern Conference Championship um, in the USL. Um, that, again, is getting ready to start up. I guess in the next few weeks, the Rowdies are getting ready um, to play. Um, they offer their – they have a new vendor – uh, at Al Lang Field, that is where, if you do not know, guys, uh, Al Lang Stadium is once where the St. Louis Cardinals used to do their spring training. Uh, and now the Rowdies have that have the stadium down in downtown. They've also unrevealed a new crest that they'll be wearing on their uniforms this year. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something new that the Rowdies are doing. As with every sports team, guys, we always know that they change a the color. Or they put something on their logo so that you will buy merchandise, and you know that's what they do. We all know that every 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 sports team, no matter how big or small the league is, that's what they do. And there's you know there's just that. I would imagine so. Yes, yes, yes. So I I'm hoping, uh, you know, in all seriousness, that I get to attend a Rowdies game this year. I want to go. I've never guys been to a live soccer game, whether it be USL. Mm -hmm. Never. MLS, I've never been to a live soccer game. So I'm going to try to make a Rowdies game this season um, just to try to go and see what it's like. I know a lot of people that I Well, you have professional soccer now in, in Florida. You have Orlando. You have Miami. Um, 
Yes, we do. We do yeah. have major league soccer here in the state of Florida. Even Austin has one now. Um, did they, did they start up, Lewis? Did did MLS start? Yes. Okay. Last uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll have to now that I'll, I'll have to come. Okay, then next week I'm going to have to work on getting Orlando and Miami on here for soccer because that's part of the the sports venue. Okay. Thanks for letting me know that. I'll leave, go ahead. I know I know the soccer. You leave that to me. Cool. Then I'll, I'll do that next week. I'll bring or not next week, but the week after because I won't have. Sure you're on, right? But I'll go ahead and make sure that I bring those two teams on. It's what is it? The Orlando. What are they? They're purple. What is the? What's their? their it's team? Orlando SC. SC. Okay. And what's Miami? Miami is FC. FC. Okay. All right. Well, then, guys. Starting two weeks from now, I will be talking Major League Soccer on this show because they are part of the the Florida venue. So I definitely will be. Let me just check that to make sure, so I don't want to mislead your. I also want to mislead the crowd. Okay. Yeah, and uh, New York is too as well. Okay. New York has Red Bulls, which used to be called the Metro Stars, and NYFC, which is like the equivalent to the uh, Mets. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. well, you guys know how I feel about you know that. For those of you who pay attention to my other shows. Yeah. You know that even Am knows that. Uh, wish he was here tonight. Yeah, I'm not sure where he's at. Probably he's probably sleeping off. We kept him up too oh, late. Yeah, last yeah, yeah. Never, never mind. <laughs> He kept him up too late. <laughs> I think we did. He was uh if you, if you guys didn't miss that, I'll put that video on on the YouTube channel. No, you know what? You don't want to do that. Believe me. Well, I, see, that's why I asked him because I don't, I'm not I didn't really want to put that video on there. No, you know, because he fell asleep in the middle of the show. Uh, guys, this, the YouTube channel I have is a sports no, nerd. What, what happened? I lost you guys for a bit last night. What happened? I, I we see the funny thing about that is we didn't lose you. We could hear you talking and everything. I don't know what I exactly you guys. with the volume or something. Something went. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Technology. That's yeah, that's what it is, guys. Technology doesn't always work all the time. <laughs> sometimes no, it's kidding. good. Sometimes it's always good to do interviews over the phone too, the old fashioned way. Uh, yeah. You have someone call well, in. That's, well, that's the preface of live radio. Yep. Correct. Of course, I've done this now for eight years, so it'll be. I think it'll be three years for me this year. Like, time goes by really fast. Well, yeah. don't forget, I started locally. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Inner Miami Center uh, CF. It's Inner Miami CF. Okay. Mm-hmm. Inner Inner Miami Center Field. Okay. Uh, and Orlando City SC. That's it. Orlando City. Okay. So again, well, next week, guys, yeah, n- not next week, but the week after that, I'll be covering both of those teams. This is the ML. I could put the Rowdies and them in the same kind of category with soccer. Um, so we'll go ahead and talk about them next. Uh, the, ne- the next, my next show. Just be have. sure. Just be sure the crowd doesn't get you rowdy, though. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. and believe it or not, folks, I don't even. We don't even script these jokes at all. No, these are unscripted. Jokes. Yeah, I lived. Um, there were some lines for them. We'll jump, guys, to the NBA. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with the Toronto Raptors, who, guys, if you again do not know, just like the Blue Jays are stuck in America because the border between the United States and Canada is still shut due to COVID mm-hmm. uh, 19. Um, but again, uh, with the Raptors, you know, I, I keep, I've read a couple articles today that. They want Kyle Lowry wants to sign and trade with Philadelphia. Uh, have you heard about anything like that, Lewis? I've read a couple articles about that today. Well, he wants to yeah, mm-hmm. and um, it says Kawhi Leonard was the only reason why the Raptors won the title two years ago. Yeah, uh, that's true. So that's he, true. He is now in Los Angeles with the Clippers. <laughs> he actually left the year after they won the. NBA title there, so um, I mean, again, not not really a lot of talk about about the Raptors. Uh, they've not really had a fantastic year. Let yeah. me head over to NBA.com real quick and see if there's 
scoreboard or anything I like that. Still kidding. I mean, well, the Clippers are. It, it, it looked like to me, if I'm not mistaken, I saw LeBron James is coming back soon. Yes. If he's not back tonight, he'll be, he'll play against the Raptors on Sunday after missing okay. 20 games. Okay. Um, it doesn't, I don't see anything with Toronto, Miami, or excuse me, Orlando down 84 69 to the Grizzlies at the median moment. But I don't see mm-hmm. Miami or Toronto, which means maybe they didn't play, maybe they have the night off. So I don't no, see it. Either one of them, and let's look at the standings real quick to see where the. Let me see three- if I can find on ESPN or something. Okay. That's not what I want. Stupid. Okay, so right now, here's how the standings go. Um, right now, the Miami Heat would be in the play-in as the seven seed. Ooh. Um, the top six in the Eastern Conference are the net 76 or Bucks. Knicks, Hawks, and Celtics are the top six. Then it's the Heat, Hornets, Pacers, Wizards. And then, of course, the Magic are second to last just in front of Detroit. They both have 19 wins. The Magic have 43 losses. The Pistons have 44 losses. So that is that. Um, So that, guys, would cover Toronto's in 12th. They are um, 26 and 37. Washington is 28-34. So technically they're only two out of the loss call or two out of the win call. That's not too bad. But there's not really a lot of games left. And again, um it's about so, 10 for most. Yeah, right now, if the playoffs started today, Miami will be playing the Charlotte Hornets in the 7-8 matchup. Um, and they would be the only team uh on this show that I cover that would make it to the postseason. The Red the Magic are not going to make the postseason, and the Toronto Raptors are currently outside looking in. So at the medium moment, Miami would be the only team that I would have. Um, now, I have also seen, too, that Kyle Lowry's been wanting to maybe possibly go to Miami and join Jimmy Butler. So maybe that's going to happen uh, over the offseason. Um, have, they have they had their trade deadline yet? The NBA um, trade deadline. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so it'll have to be during the off season um, for that. Um, got when it comes to the Magic guys again, another team that's really struggling. They're not really going to be um, much out of them. It's going to be rebuilding in Orlando. Uh, that's basically all I can say about the Magic. They're in another rebuilding era. They're going to have to start from scratch and. You know, it's not looking uh, not looking up for the Magic at the immediate moment. So, any other NBA news that I have will be, you know, with those three. But so far right now, Miami is the only team that looks like could be in the playoffs. Again, they were in the NBA Finals a year ago when they lost to the Lakers in the Finals in six games. Let me, guys, jump to the National Hockey League. And we'll start with the guys in Sunrise who – this team, boys, is scary. Let me tell you about the Florida Panthers. This is a team that really is a team that should not be taken lightly. This is a very good hockey team. Yes. Um, Sam Bennett, who they got, uh, is doing fitting in very, very well at the trade deadline. Um, they right now are currently the uh, number two in the division. It's Carolina, Florida, Tampa Bay, um, and then Nashville are the top four. Um, in that division. So, of course, the Lightning are chasing the Panthers. Uh, either way, if it's going to be Florida and the Lightning in round one, it's 2 3. See, I don't think Nashville can catch any of the other ones. So, I don't expect uh, Florida or Tampa Bay to fall out of the 2 3 seed. But to me, guys, if, if, if I'm looking at it the right way, I think for Florida hockey fans in general, we want this. We want, we want the Lightning and the Panthers in the playoffs against each other. I think we've been wanting this for a long time, and now we're going to get it. We're going to get an opportunity yeah. because I think no matter what happens, whether Florida is the two seed and the Lightning are the three or vice versa, this is uh, something that um, we've been wanting to see for a long time. Uh, in case you're wondering, guys, head over to lightning.com. 
to see what the Stanley Cup championship ring looks like. Uh, very, yeah. very, very uh, interesting. I think it has 126 diamonds. And it's the thing is like, this, you, can, you can see my finger here. Hang on a minute, guys. Let me put my finger yeah, here. Yeah. The ring is like this big. I, I think my wow. finger is in the way. The, the ring's like that big. I mean, it's huge. Perfect. It's huge. So again, mm -hmm. to me, I, I don't know where you'd wear that thing. You're just drawing attention to yourself if you'd wear that thing. <laughs> yeah. I, if you're wondering, guys, they, they are selling a version to the fans for a grand prize total of just over $12,000. So you can go uh, on that and order one, and you can have at that. You can have at that. Even if I had twelve grand, I don't think I would spend it on a ring that's never going to no. get worn. Because it would just sit in a box, and <laughs> that would be about it. You know, for me, but uh, that was me a decade ago. I would have uh, given that to my girlfriend. Mm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. My former girlfriend, that is. There you go. Yep. See. Yeah. Too little, too late, folks. <laughs> All right. So now we, as I always do, guys, I always end my show with 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 the college kids, and we start in Portal Gables. Um, it looks like as of right now. The quarterback uh, dead chart will be pretty good against Alabama. Uh, Hurricanes start their season against the defending national champions. Um, mm, what a pair. That's a very tall order for um, Manny Diaz and company down there in Coral Gable. Mm. Um, one of their coaches, uh, Tavares Robinson, has helped, again, get a lot of Miami's um, kids to get drafted in the uh, NFL draft. There were a lot of Miami Hurricanes wow. that got drafted. Uh, not as many as Alabama. Obviously, I think Alabama had the most. No, 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 no. But there were some um, some Miami Hurricane defensive players that went in the draft last, you know, in the both first and second round. As we are now, there. I wish I wish that the, the time when it went last night. They're moving through rounds two and three like hotcakes. It's not even a joke. We're already at pick seventy four already. Yeah, They're, but it started at seven o'clock though. Yeah, see, I wish they had started an hour early. If they had yeah. started at seven o'clock. We'd have been off the air at eleven instead of midnight. So, <laughs> yeah, so that would have well, been. They had to make the first night a spectacle. So yes, yeah, that they do. That they do. You know, they want to make it you know, like an opening act for a rock concert, and then they have to do all the other stuff. So they want to make opening night, you know, more festive. Correct. Correct. More person in the pregame Super Bowl. <laughs> so again, guys, we'll we'll have to see as we get obviously as we draw closer. We're about uh well, May May first is tomorrow, so we're about four months away from the start of the college football season back up. So yep. we'll have to wait over the next four months to see how Miami. Well, actually, it's the last week of August, so we'll have to okay. Like okay. All right. So then we got about. Three months to go then. Three months, about three months to go. That's not yeah, really yeah. heavy before college football starts up. Um, Thankfully. Thank, yes, absolutely. The next team, guys, is the boys that call Tallahassee home, and that's the Florida oh. State Generals. Um, here we are, guys. I got to um, – I watched on YouTube the other day. Obviously, guys, I can't share any YouTube clips on here. Yeah. I got hit with a copyright claim on my other show. So I can't show any uh, thing on here, but I got you know, to see, made the same mistake twice. Right. Got to see Mackenzie Milton, the transfer from UCF to Florida State. And he's very, very happy uh, to be playing in Tallahassee. He seems very humble. He's done very, very well through the spring, through spring ball and all that stuff. So that's great. Um, they've also got some offensive line help in Florida State, which that'll definitely help any quarterback. No matter what, you know, if you're a freshman or what class you're in in college football, uh, getting an offensive line to sure up keeping your quarterback from being getting his jersey dirty mm -hmm. is always a good thing. Um, so, so far, um, Coach Norvell is very happy with how the spring ball has gone so far for the Knowles. He's off to a lot better start than he was a year ago, guys, when this team was in dismay. Coming, excuse me, coming into the season – and it didn't go very well in Tallahassee. Now it looks like everything is back on track for the boys in Tallahassee. So we'll have to wait and see, you know, how their season goes. And again, uh, 
there won't be there will be out of conference games this year. So thank goodness for that. That there will yeah. be out of conference games that we're not. Or as we like to call it. Go ahead. You're not going to say it, are you? No. Oh, yeah. cup games. Well, cup. you call it. We call it cream puff. So cream puff. okay, yeah, cream puff yeah. cup games. Yep, yeah. you can call them that. There are going to be some for every team out there. All the big programs have them. Well, score 125 to three. <laughs> All the big programs have them. So, um, the next team, guys, obviously, mm -hmm. coordinators uh, they call Gainesville home. Um, again, they are another team that had a very good spring. Obviously, now they have Emory Jones now uh, as Kyle Trask, as we just saw just a few moments ago, is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. So that's uh, Emory Jones will be replacing him. Um, they have to get the defense right. I think that was kind of one of the the falters uh, last night, or last year, last night, last year for the Gators was the defense uh, really down the stretch. When it came time to play those gritty games against uh, Alabama in the SEC title game, and then, of course, I know half the team opted out of their bowl game against Oklahoma, but still it would have been nice to have some kind of uh, defense there. So the Gators guys, um, they started home, and then, of course, their first road game is in Tampa against U USF. Um, your truly is hoping to be there in person to see them play the Bulls on September 11th. And, guys, how fast time goes by, do you realize that on that day, it will be the 20th anniversary of 9-11? Mm -hmm. I cannot believe and fathom that that happened 20 years ago. Um, that is one of those – it's obviously something we hope we never see again in our history. Um, very sad day for all of us, all Americans. Very sad day to see what happened on that dreadful day. Um, in in New York, um, I made a trip to New York uh, about seven years after 9-11 happened. Um, and when I got off the plane at LaGuardia Airport near where the Mets, the Mets call home, um, I got off the plane and someone asked me, what did I want to do when I first got to New York? Uh, and the first thing I said is I want to see Ground Zero. That was my complete answer when I got off the plane. I wanted to see what it looked like uh, when I got there, guys. It was um, twisted metal from the old from the towers that they had moved out, and they were laying the foundation from now. The Freedom Tower sits on that site um, there in New York, um, and I know at the time I know that they have recently also put in uh, fountains and put all the names of the people who reluctantly died in those planes and in those buildings uh, on that uh, dreadful day uh, in September. Um, so again, guys, that will be, I'm sure that all around college football on that Saturday um, and probably on, even in the NFL that Sunday, if, if we're in the regular season by then, mm -hmm. there will be uh, all kinds of um, tributes to all of the people who lost their lives on that day. It's just, Absolutely astounds me how fast time goes by that that, that happened that long ago. It's like, it seems like it was yesterday that that happened, and it's going to be 20 for years. Me, for me, it does seem like that. Yep, 20-year anniversary of that is is already here. Um, for guys, you, you, uh, UCF, basically the boys in Orlando, it it all revolves around Gus Melzon. You know, this is the guy who, you know, took the job. Um it's all around him. Um, if the um, Seminoles are holding a uh, coaching thing, Gus Malzahn, Mike Norvell, Manny Diaz are all going to be invited. Uh, and so is the governor of the state, Ron DeSantis, as well. So they'll all be there. Um, but uh, you at UCF also has uh, also is looking to get a SpaceX stadium sponsorship. SpaceX, of course, is one of those company that's on the rise they're trying to get more eyes on the stadium in orlando so that definitely uh is something that they uh, want to do but again it all revolves around gus mills on he's trying to get these trying to keep the ucf knights you know legit in the state of florida and yes they you know continuing to try to keep them um in the thick of it and really 
they're a good football team. I can't see them falling off that much uh, yeah. this year in the AAC. And as I always do, guys, I end with the boys that call Tampa home not too far from me. This is a team that I've gotten to know and cover the last three years. Um, in fact, this last year, guys, the very first USF home football game I went to, and there were not one fan in the stands. Not one fan was there. Um, how eerie that was. Hopefully this year, again, where I'm hoping to be there for their first home game, and that's against uh, – I think that could be arranged. Um, so I'm the credential thing is, you know, again, has to work in my favor again this year. But um, it looks like um, they're trying to work out, guys, that last year the Bulls were supposed to go to, to uh, Austin to play the Texas Longhorns. Uh, so they're trying to re-get that game rescheduled because, they again, if you do not know, USF scheduled a 2-1. and one. And what that means, guys, is Texas will come here to Tampa. USF will go to Austin twice to play against the Longhorns. Uh, so Texas will come here one year in the near future. I think in the next couple of years, you will see um, Texas come here. That was part of, yeah. um, you know, Coach Scott wanted to kind of get these, to get USF's, you know, more eyes on the university. And a way of doing that, as Adam mentioned last week, is to get out there and play the teams so going out to play texas and florida and alabama and all the teams that they have notre dame is another one that's on the schedule in the near future they continue to keep doing this there's going to be more eyes on the usf bulls moving forward than not you know not having them at all so that um is interesting as well um again that's another team that we'll have to keep our eyes on as we get closer to the start of the college football season so with that guys that is my show this evening i don't have anything else to add to it but again guys the sunshine state sports jabber is sponsored by arena eats log on the website guys arena eats that app for the ultimate fan experience at your local sports venues arena eats mobile app express pickup nc delivery and uh um pre-order how do you place your order guys and again, the Walker, I'm uh, sorry, excuse me, the Sunshine State Sports Chapter is part of NGSC Sports. Guys, remember the website, it's ngscsports.com. And before I always do, check out the YouTube channel, guys, the Sports Nerd Bradley Walker, where this show will be on its entirety. Before I go, Lewis, do you want to go ahead and talk about your show tomorrow? Yes, the Enhanced Sports Show, Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we'll cover the first, uh, the majority of the first two rounds of the, of the draft. Uh, also, it's a Kentucky Derby tomorrow, so don't forget about that. Uh, the We'll take a look at the standings for NHL and uh, NBA and Major League Baseball. Um, maybe give a little playoff preview of the NHL and NBA, uh, whatnot, so, and uh, some minor league baseball news and uh, Major League Baseball news. And I'll have our regular features like the Ridiculous Eye of the Week. I'll have some uh, random questions to discuss. So if you got time between 5 and 7 tomorrow, Call the following number, 512-543-4662. That number again, 512-543-4662. I look forward to hearing from as many of you as possible. All right. Thank you, sir. Before I go, guys, as I always do, I want to thank uh, the men and women. Uh, our, first of all, our doctors, nurses, and first responders. Thank you guys for being the true heroes uh, since the pandemic has started last year. Uh, also, to our men and women of our armed services, both active, retired, and the ones who have left us, thank you for your sacrifice because we would not be able to do what we do and love to do every week, We're sitting here talking to you guys, entertaining you guys without your sacrifice. So thank you so much for what you do. And before I go, always to, to the police officers, firefighters, and paramedics, thank you for keeping us safe here domestically. As always, guys, again, like I said, the show won't be on next week. I'll be out of town. I will be back the following week, and I will be back on with this fine gentleman to my right on the walk report in a couple of weeks. And Adam, uh, our other co-host, uh, was unable to get on here tonight, but he'll be back on. Guys, I think if I will be on a show next week, it will be Bullseye uh, on Tuesday night as we get back. We haven't had a show in a long time. That's all USF, guys, and all USF podcast. We talk all USF athletics uh, with my co-host, Larry Frank. So hopefully we'll be back on that show this week. We'll have to wait and see. Good luck. Thank you. But until that, guys, I want to wish everyone a great Friday. 
Uh, have a great weekend, guys. Stay safe. Get vaccinated if you if you choose to. Wear your mask if you choose to. But until then, guys, this is the Sports Nerd. Peace. And have a happy Mother's Day, guys, next week. Yeah. Mother's Day to everyone out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Just I mentioned that since we won't be on next week. <laughs> Good night, folks.